a more perfect union, justice, domestic tranquility, common defense, general welfare, the blessings of liberty. Those are the purposes the founders wrote down in our Constitution, the general welfare, the common defense. Now America is preparing to defend the peace we love against being shattered from without. And within, we prepare at the same time to defend that American dream which is the chief blessing of liberty, the great guarantee of domestic tranquility, the pledge of general welfare. The American dream that the common man shall have his chance to share in the vast abundance that our resources, our skill, and our labor can produce. For the defense of that, the arsenal, the factory, and the farm will join. First of all, food and clothing for 130 million Americans day by day, good years and bad. And a fair reward for the men and women on seven million farms whence come the food and fiber. For the common defense, soldiers and sailors. Soldiers and sailors need guns, planes, tanks, ships, and machines. Men at work to make the means of common defense. Men in overalls, men in uniform. Men need food and clothing from the looms of America. Men will work for the right of their families to have in peace plenty of food and plenty of clothing. Men will defend that too. The plow and the planter, as well as the plane, defend our peace. The way of the farmers is a sure, unhurried, cooperative, democratic way. In just that way, America's farmers have built a national farm program, budgeting their plantings, producing plenty without waste, using but not abusing their soil. They know America's needs, and they have adjusted their production to meet our needs. They have stored plenty in their bins. normal granary is a full storehouse of abundance across the nation as they mean it to be for peace or for preparedness. In the National Farm Program, farmers meet, plan, work together more than ever before. They can answer ready when the nation calls the role of its defenders. Food and clothing for general welfare and for common defense come from America's fertile soil. The good, rich earth is the real reservoir of our strength. You can't feed and clothe 130 million Americans from gullied wasteland. A terrace across the slope is defense. Defense of America's good soil. And part of the farmer's plan is to pay back to the soil some of its spent richness of lime and phosphate. They give back to the soil its protection of clover and grass, rest the fields in their turn from the hard drive of front-line crop production. Count enough years and the harvest is average. But year by year, some crops are fat, some are lean. to get caught with an empty pantry and empty bins in those lean years. Least of all the farmer, who's got his livestock to feed every day, winter and summer, until the next crop comes in. So now the nation's farmers plan together, setting up allotments of acreage to be planted that will keep the granaries full. Not only full, but with something over, just in case the rains fail next year or customers want a little more wheat or cotton or tobacco or corn. They talk it over in meetings from Maine to California. They listen to the facts. They ask the questions. What does America need? How much should we hold over? 
how much do we need to plant? How's our land holding up? And they make up their minds as Americans know how to do. They are the farmers. It's their say-so. If the fat harvests are to be saved for the lean years, they must be stored. But if a farmer stores a thrifty supply against the nation's need, he ought to be able to bank against it for a loan to tide him over. A farmer needs his money at harvest time, so part of the farmer's plan is to store the corn, the wheat, or the cotton, safely inspected and graded. sample goes to the laboratory. If it's good, the farmer can get it along, and the granary is sealed until it's needed. Always enough and to spare. Never any produced only to be wasted. That's why farmers call it the ever-normal granary. The ever-normal granary means something to the 130 million eaters in this country, too. Come what may, our folks needn't go on short rations. Remember back in 1917 and 1918, the meatless days and the wheatless days? Modern America's farmers have organized our defense against having that happen again. Many a pair of hands finds work moving bacon along from the barnyard to the breakfast table. It's a big job giving America its three squares a day. The biggest job in America, come to think of it. A job in which labor, too, has its part to play. Yes, sir, times have changed since Grandma did her Saturday baking. machines and organization have put a new twist in bread baking since Grandma's day. It takes men, machines, and organization to get food to all America three times a day. Men, machines, and organization no less on the farm than in the factory. The average American eats as much meat as this every week. Some places, all the meat you'd be allowed in a week is just what's on that little plate. But in the United States, you can pass that big plate for a second helping and a third. Some places, you have to have a ration card for almost every bite you eat. Not here. Here we have food stamps to help people who are hard up eat more of the kinds of food they need. Not ration cards to make them go always a little bit hungry. In the food stamp plan, needy families get extra food. When they spend a dollar for orange-colored food stamps, they get 50 cents worth of blue stamps free. The orange-colored food stamps are good for any food in the grocery store. The blue stamps are good only for surplus foods that somewhere are glutting markets because farmers cannot sell them at decent prices and needy people cannot buy them for decent living. So surpluses are harnessed to work for farmers and the people, not against them. And there's food in America for peace, or for preparedness. Food for workmen, hungry after a good morning's work. There's food for your family and mine and millions like us and like these. There's food when we feel like eating it just for fun at the county fair. food for the mats. There's food however you like it and wherever you want it 
on the ground or above the clouds. And for Junior here. Well, he can eat his spinach for supper, can't he? And young lady, drink yourself a toast to health. So that these children may have their chance to grow up in the peaceful way of life our people have chosen, this nation has called its young men into service. Thousands of our citizens have become, temporarily, soldiers. From counters and workbenches, from homes and schools, they have come to learn how they may serve the common defense. Of all the things they have to learn, none will be more important than this. Any army travels on its stomach. And Uncle Sam's army can travel on a full stomach. When the National Guard took the field in its greatest peacetime maneuvers, the rations rolled up to company kitchens on schedule. Yes, even in a mechanized army, KP still means peeling spuds. Maybe you've heard that an army lives on beans and corn willy. Maybe an army did once. As a matter of fact, Uncle Sam's nephews in uniform get milk, butter, fresh vegetables and fruit, along with plenty of bread, beef, bacon, and beans. And all of those things America's farmers have produced and are ready to produce in abundance. But the Army needs more than food from farmers. Strange as it seems, as armies use more machines, they use more horses, too. Farms raise the horses and feed them. The Army's four-wheel drive trucks can take the Army almost anywhere. They roll along on tires in which there is cotton from America's farms. There's more cotton in tents, in webbing straps, in gun cotton, and in dozens of other things the Army uses. In uniforms, more cotton and wool. And still, there's plenty of cotton. Cavalry's boots and saddles come from the herds on America's vast western range. For this young guardsman eating his tin ration during a pause in maneuvers, and for his family around the table at home, American farmers have given their pledge of abundance and backed it up with a national farm program that gears production to the nation's needs.
to defend ourselves against new threats, we must learn. New ways of sure defense against the old threat of hunger, of glut and waste, farmers have learned. build strength for defense in the skies, seven million farmers have built strong defense across the nation, backing up the promise of abundance for all that liberty speaks to the world.